Good morning, everybody. This is another round of coffee and questions, and today's topic is benches and how to make the legs and how to make some kind of a bench out of railroad ties or something like that that you come across, probably at one of the big box supply stores. And there were a lot of questions relating to the difficulty in making these. So I thought I would go through a slideshow and I won't make it a long video. This is to give you ideas so that when you go out into your shop, you can form these yourself. You can fabricate them out of angle iron, tube steel, things like that. So I'll make brief comments from what we got off of the forum on ways that you can do this. I'm not going to overcomplicate things. I'm going to make them as easy and straightforward as I can. Some of them will be very decorative. Some of them won't be. So the ones that are more decorative, of course, are going to take you a little bit more time. So I'm going to make the assumption in the video here when I go through the slideshow that you already know something about weld prepping and that you know how to weld, whether it's oxyacetylene, MIG, TIG, whatever you have, or arc welding, whatever you got going on. So let me jump right into the slides. I'm going to remove the coffee and question part and we'll talk about this one first. Give me just a sec. Okay, these benches were made out of like a railroad tie kind of material and they're uh, pretty simple to make and you can see the holes in the angle iron where somebody can put lag bolts and really stiffen these up. Now, what's the hard part about doing this is you have to have a way to cut a straight line so that the angle iron sits into the wood like you see here in the picture. So that might be the little difficult part about this. But the nice part about it is once you have those cuts in there and the angle iron set in, you can level this pretty easy, put your lag bolts in, and then you can use like a, a four and a half inch angle grinder with a flap wheel or a grinding wheel, and you can grind down the tops and make them of the angle iron rather to make them nice and smooth. So this is a fairly easy one um, to make, but it, a little time consuming in a couple of the parts and you use lag bolts, but it's fairly simple and quick to throw together. Let me change the picture. We'll talk about the next one. Okay, let's take a look at the one up here on the top left. Now this one is not that difficult. You can get tube steel and you can make these V patterns and that piece of tube steel on the bottom will make it sit flat. Then you can use a piece of just flat steel and on the top of that V, it can, you can weld it across and then that's what the table can sit on you can drill up holes up through it and use lag bolts. So this one's fairly easy to do. The one over here to the right of it on the top is a little bit harder to do because you're taking railroad ties and there's not so much of anything in welding here, but you're going to have to be pretty skilled with a saw to be able to cut and drop these things in there like you see in the picture here. But I thought it was pretty cool. It's a little bit more complex. So I want to stick with what was simple. Let's take a look on the bottom left. This is just plate steel just flat steel you can get it out the steel supply yards and you can make these rectangles then from the rectangles if you take a look real close there's a bottom piece that supports it and then the top piece comes over it you know and brackets it on there and so you can use lag bolts again and go through that bottom and hold it in place but it's real easy to do but it's not very fancy either now let's take a look at the one over on the bottom right now this one was made with something similar to those railroad ties, but he used a piece of you know rectangular steel, then he welded these uprights on there of flat plate steel, and then he just simply set them in there. So you'll have to measure and get your exact width, I mean, before you drop these in there. But it looks pretty rustic, and I thought it was interesting, and it was a simple approach. So let me tear these down, and we'll keep moving and discussing the other ones that people have made. Okay, now here are some more ways to make the legs. Remember, these are ideas that you can use out in your shop to replicate the same thing. So take a look on the upper left. This is an X pattern. Very easy to do with steel. You just have to figure out your angles. And I'll try to throw up something at the end to demonstrate different ways to figure out the angles. Now, the one next to it on the upper left, second one in, is the X's with a rectangular piece in the middle. Now, what's kind of neat about these, depending on the size of that rectangular piece, you can put like another 4x4 four four or another beam that goes through them from one end of the table you know, to the other. But it also shows you these tabs on there that the guy has welded, and it has holes in them so that when you set that wood plank, or that beam down on there, you're able to come up from the bottom up with lag bolts or something like that to hold it in nice and secure. But if you take a look, this is very simple welding. Take a look at the one on the very upper right. This is even a simpler approach. Again, he just used flat plate steel 
probably got it out in the scrap yard or something like that. He welded these up. He drilled holes in the top of it again. That's to secure that tabletop down when he has them the spacing that he wants. It's an easy way here because if you make these like this, you're not so concerned over, you know, the length, but you will be over the width. I mean, you do want the plate steel that secures the tabletop wide enough. So take a look on the one right next to me, bottom right of me, and it shows you those tabs a little bit clearer, but it has a narrower, you know, rectangular piece in the middle. So it's all up to you and your design of how you want to do these. But instead of making it like on the one on the far upper right where it's just plain Jane, you can actually add some character to these by just playing around a little bit longer with your welder. And the tube steel does not cost that much. I mean, once you've bought the legs and everything else, just these scrap pieces create, you know, the aesthetic touch to it. Take a look at the one on the far bottom right. There's one where it's much bigger. And again, that rectangular piece in the middle, you can put a nice big beam in through there. Or, you know, I would tell you to measure the beam and then make that rectangular piece so that the beam slides in there. Because like for me and a lot of people, it's too hard to cut that beam down to an exact dimension. So I would figure out my dimension of the beam that's going to go through the center there first, then make the rectangular pieces. That way I know that the beam will slide in there. Now he used up on top, he used plate steel to go around it and he drilled holes. Like I said, it's a way to secure the top. Okay, so these are fairly simple projects. You don't need complex tools to do them. So let's keep moving because I didn't want to make the video long, but I wanted to give you plenty of ideas on how to make these table legs. Okay, now let's take a look at the one on the very upper left. Again, this is not a complicated welding project in terms of making legs. He just used tube steel. He figured his angles out and he put a piece of plate steel across the top where the wood will sit on there and he'll secure it. And this gives it a little bit of design. So this is a pretty cool approach too. Take a look at the one in the middle on the top. And this one, he's got some tabs on the top um, for some type of a glass. And this is a little bit more complex in terms of this crisscrossing. You'll have to spend more time with it. I haven't made anything like this. Um, I'd have to put some thought into it. But it is kind of a nice way if you had two of these with like a glass top or something on there, I suppose. So let's take a look at the ones on the very upper right. This is a very simple way. He just bent and welded, you know, some flat steel. Um, very basic. I mean, not something I would do. I like something that's got a little bit more character in it. Let's take a look at the one just to the right of me here. Now, I thought this was pretty rustic looking. And again, it's just rectangular steel that he used. And it looks to be a pretty nice bench. Pretty simple to make. And he put some strapping across it for decoration. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. I think he did it just to make it look a little bit more pleasing. Take a look on the far bottom right. Now, this is a simple way to do it. Now, I don't have a way myself to accurately make those sweeps, those bends. But, I mean, even if you did them out of straight steel, you'd be back to the one where I said the guy puts the 4x4, four four, you know, between it, which gives it you know, a little bit more of a nicer look. You can actually finish the wood any way you want. And the same thing with the top, but it does look like a nice top. And it's a nice looking table all the way around. Okay, so I threw these up too, just to give you a better idea of how this guy does things. And um, I did mine the same way when I made one of these. The one on the very upper top left, you're gonna see in the middle, it's got three holes drilled where the beam slides in, and that's just for securing so it doesn't slide, you know, right to left and move around. Now, you don't have to do that if the table isn't getting a lot of movement. On the last one that I made, I didn't do that, but I made this, you know, this crisscross pattern, and it's not that hard. I mean, if you just take a look, there's very simple welds, and then you have to clean them up, of course, and make everything look nice before you start, you know, putting that tabletop on there. Take a look at the one on the top, very far right. This shows you a very simple way. If you don't want to add any of the decorations in, like the crisscross pattern and, and all of that, this is just simple rectangular steel welded together, you know, to create that table top or that bench top. Then you go ahead and secure your wood to the top of it. Okay, right next to me on the bottom here, to my right, this is a Z pattern. Now, these are two legs. And you can separate these, you know, as far apart as you want and then put your tabletop on there 
and it gives it a lot of leg room no matter which direction you know you're sitting in so that was another way of doing it um i haven't made this one yet but i thought it was a good idea i threw it up here so it gives you another idea the one next to it again is just showing you those little tabs welded on there for the support of the beam or the tabletop itself and it shows you that x pattern again and it's not hard once you have your angle the way that you want it run these through your chop saw or whatever cutting method you have and then it's just a matter of welding them so let me throw up some other pictures and we will complete the video one, one sec now i'm throwing this one up here just for completion sake because i had somebody text and say hey what if you don't have a welder and you still want to make some kind of a table well you can make it out of piping black piping that you get out at home depot or lowe's the picture above straight up all the way and I'll explode it here in a sec, is showing you how somebody just took simple parts out of a piping section in the store and put, began to put the frame together. Now take a look at the one over to the right of me on the bottom. And he built this up. He can bring it up as tall as he wants to. You can use those same steel round pads that you used, you know, for the bottom here and put them on the top because they got pre-drilled holes. And then that'll secure that top, uh, whatever wood you're using to the top. So, I mean... You don't need a welder. I mean, you just need to go ahead and buy the stuff and you can assemble it this way with pipe wrenches if that's what you want to. And this person wanted to do it because it gives it that old time rustic look, I suppose. So let me uh, blow up the pictures real quick and I'll show you a close up. Give me just a sec. All right, here's a close up of uh, the piping assembly. Let me take it down and I'll show you the other one blown up. And here's a completed table, a lot of piping blown up. I didn't want to blow it up anymore. It gets too blurry. But it just shows you it is not that difficult to make. I mean, if you went and bought all this stuff, you could just sit out on your garage and assemble it. And as long as you've got that tabletop, that beam tabletop, which uh, I had a friend of mine, he's going to make it, but he's going to make it out of railroad ties because it's a lot easier to find these old railroad ties in the garden section, you know, out at some of the big box. So anyway, he's going to make it for outside. All right. So a couple of questions and answers here. Here we go. Okay, a couple of questions are, how do I deal with the ends of the rectangular steel? Okay, I plug them like you see here in the picture to the left of me. Now, this one here I took off of the internet and it's got some really pretty welds on it. Mine sometimes are not that pretty. But what I also do is I use a four and a half inch angle grinder with an abrasive wheel on there. Usually around 40 or 60 grit and then I might go and change over to an 80 grit wheel to really make them look slick and nice before painting now the other thing about that is is i always wipe everything down with acetone because all of the steel that i get comes from a steel supply store and it's got cosmoline on it and i keep saying this in all my previous videos because people ignore it and then they send me you know these questions like hey i can't get paint to stick to it my welds are splattering all over the place and all this stuff i weld prep my steel I wipe the ends around where I'm going to weld with acetone. It just takes a couple of seconds. I let it dry. I do my welding. But when the project's done, I wipe the whole thing down with acetone before I use primer or painting. So that will answer a lot of those questions. It's just a matter of plugging it. Just buy some plate steel from out at the steel supply store. That's a roughly the same dimension as what you have. You can grind them down very rapidly and shape them and make them look like plugs, basically. Now, the picture over here on the right you have to go back to one of my videos where i address how you can put you know feet or leveling feet in a do-it-yourself kind of a fashion without having to buy them of course if you wanted to buy them you can get them from places like rockler granger mcmaster car you know places like that home depot and lowe's might even sell them i prefer to make my own and in the, one of the previous videos you can go back and search i show you several methods on how to do that this is showing you one here also, and it's kind of open. I mean, now that bolt that's running up through there, or wherever this guy got this, I use just regular bolts. And again, in the video I described to you, I mean, you know, the do's and the don'ts of using the bolts and how to secure them in there. But this will help you level out that table when you're done. A lot of the rectangular steel tables that we were just talking about, they don't have these kind of feet on them, but somebody had asked a question, well, what if I want to put feet on there and I need to level it so that it sits and there's no rocking or something like that and this is one way to address that now I don't have that problem when I use the rectangular steel as a base now if you're going to use them like in an upright vertical fashion 
and you're not going to use them in a horizontal way, then yeah, you might need some kind of a leg or a pad or something under it like this. So anyway, I hope that answers your question. Okay, above me, here's the way that the guy started this project. Very simple, used plate steel, rectangular steel. He made this frame. Now look at the picture on the top right. And he welded those tabs on the top for the wood to sit on. He painted it black. And look at the bottom right. And then he put a cedar top on this wood that he got out at one of the big box stores. Now he hasn't finished it yet, but it looks pretty damn nice. And it's got a decorative touch to it, the way that he did all the little rectangles, you know, there in the middle. And you can buy a lot of this scrap cutoffs from out at the steel supply store. Just ask them where the scrap bends are and you can pull out enough and you can make the squares different sizes or whatever you want. Okay, let's take a look at the one on the very upper top left. Now here he did it again, but he used a natural edge kind of a wood top and secured it to it like a little den table or a little table in his house. Turned out good. He did the little square pattern again. Take a look at the one on the upper right. Again, he used wood from out at one of these specialty wood places. I think it's walnut, I believe. But anyway, the point is the framing itself. He just used rounded square flat steel pads at the bottom. He made a rectangle and he made this sun pattern and he used about quarter inch cold rolled steel and created all the waves and he made a half circle out of some sheet metal he probably found out there too. Again, it turned out really nice. I mean, these are different design ideas like I keep saying. Look at the bottom on the far right. This guy used that quarter inch and created this weave pattern from one end to the other and he's got his tabs welded on top you know to secure the wood to it isn't my favorite thing but i threw it up here for completion sake you can have lots and lots of design ideas that's the fun in doing these different tables okay, let's take a look any closing thoughts or anything on uh, the forum i keep waiting to see if anybody throws any additional comments up here or if there's anything that i missed one question is can i use angle iron yeah you can use any steel you want it doesn't matter bed frame rails and somebody said well what about all the holes that are in the bed frame rails well just you know hit them with your angle grinder and fill them in with like mig welding or something and then knock them back down it'll make it look like they weren't there but angle iron you know uh my preference is i would use tube steel but i understand what you're saying i mean bed frame rails they're cheap they're easy to come by yeah you can do it with bed frame rails i mean you know and this is this again, this is the video is meant to give you ideas on how to do this, not tell you how to do it. I mean, you could sit down with pencil and paper and design it yourself. The biggest thing with people is actually, you know, get off your rear end and go out and do it and not just sit around and talk about it. The last thing I'll mention on here is I always carry photos of things on my phone, tons of them. Um, I have them categorized, tables, benches, coat hangers, uh, you know, all different kinds of categories and when I'm sitting around talking it's about the best way for me for me to do a lot of advertising because I just have people flip through the phone on an area that they're interested in and somebody a lot of times will go hey can you make me one of those how much and then that sparks it you know and for me that's the easiest way I've been the business card route all this other stuff yeah that's a good idea too I'm not criticizing it it's whatever works for you what works for me tons of photographs and categories of things that I've made or that I can make and then I give them a price I mean so but anyway I'm rattling I'm the home handyman and this is meant to give you just ideas on table bases and how to do you know the bottoms of them and now you can go out in the garage and start figuring out you know how you want to make yours drop me a comment let me know how it works out I hope you click subscribe and keep following me and I thank you folks very much for watching have a good day bye-bye